Communism abolishes eternal truths. It abolishes all religion and all morality. The bourgeois family will vanish as a matter of course when its complement vanishes, and both will vanish with the vanishing of capital. Both of the above quotes are from the Communist Manifesto, and both illustrate the true goals of communism. When most people think of communism, they often understand it as an economic system for sharing of wealth. Yet communism is anything but that. What communism pushes for is an initial seizure of all private property and all means of production. This would not go to the people, as socialist tyrants often claim, but instead to an all-powerful state and a massive bureaucracy. This initial system of state control over all elements of society was socialism, or what Lenin referred to as state capitalism. Yet socialism was never meant to last. When Marx and Engels framed the idea, in a time when there were not yet any socialist or communist systems in the world, they envisioned socialism as a system of totalitarian dictatorship that would naturally fail and collapse and then lead to the stage they called communism. So what is communism? Communism is a state of moral, spiritual, cultural, and social desolation. It's an envisioned society where everything has been annihilated. During the conceptual stages of communism, even predating Marx and Engels, communism was based on the concepts of naturism, which was a Gnostic satanic theory that man is from nature, and so anything that man does is of nature. Thus, they also believed that any restraint on man's desires or whims was therefore evil. It was a system that saw evil as good and good as evil, and it's for this reason that communists and socialist tyrants have repeatedly throughout history attacked, imprisoned, or killed anyone who believed in traditional moral values. Under the Chinese Communist Party, for example, traditional moral values were labeled under the Four Olds, and anyone who held on to traditional beliefs could be killed. Communists, in order to realize their envisioned social state, understand that humankind will not willfully abandon belief in heaven, belief in families, and belief in their cultures and values. So in order to create communist societies, they understand that society must first undergo a state of totalitarian tyranny that forcefully wipes out all of these values from a society. That state of totalitarian tyranny is socialism. At the same time, Marx and Engels believed in social evolution, and they believed that conflict was the tool to drive society more quickly towards the final synthesis of communism. Part of this was based on the Hegelian dialectical theory that conflict leads forward, which Marx incorporated into his own concept of dialectical materialism. It's because of this theory, and under the communist goals of destroying tradition and belief, that socialist tyrants seek to label select members of society as class enemies to be attacked. These labels change under each socialist system, from Lenin's attacks on wealthy farmers, to Hitler's attacks on the Jews, to Mao's attacks on landlords, and to today's socialist attacks on white males. Under socialism, there's always one group that society is intentionally driven to struggle against, and this is how communists drive forward their agendas. In addition, these tyrants establish labels to attack anyone who questions these policies. In 1967, Mao Zedong framed the concept of political correctness under the concept that anyone who supported his acts of genocide and tyranny was politically correct. And anyone who opposed it was not politically correct and could be labeled, attacked, or killed. Over the last century, communism has killed more than 100 million people. Desolation is the goal of communism. Socialism is the tyrannical system of government it takes in order to achieve its goals. And struggle and hatred are its tools.